Now, if your toe wasn't tapping during that one, something's wrong with you people. That was so much fun. Thank you, Henry and choir. This week, the summer breeze has reminded me that there is nothing better than barbecue during summertime. What's your favorite part of a barbecue? Is it the food? Is it the smell of the charcoal, the fellowship? Do we really have to pick? It's all pretty fantastic if you ask me. I'm a big fan of the food personally, especially when it's pulled pork, ribs, and brisket. I might add that these are some delicacies that just taste better during the summertime. Just this week, I joined a couple of friends at a local eatery and enjoyed some delicious barbecue. It was amazing. I ate myself silly, and I was so full that I wanted to come back to church and take a nap. Don't worry, I didn't, but it did make me think. It'd be crazy to think of a barbecue time and not have summer attached to it, especially as the 4th of July nears. On a day when it feels like an oven outside, it only makes sense that we would put a big piece of meat in an actual oven and slave over it tirelessly, waiting for it to cook to perfection. I kid, but really and truly, don't you take my barbecue. I want it. I need it. I must have it. Heck, I might get a little crazy if you take my barbecue away, especially if I don't have barbecue this 4th of July. You might see your pastor get a little hangry. You know what that is, right? That perfect combination of hungry and angry at the same time. Now, I hope that never happens, but for all of our sakes, let's just make sure it doesn't, because I don't want you thinking less of me. So all the same, don't take my barbecue, please, for all of our sakes. Am I alone? Maybe that's what the people in the garrisons were feeling when they saw this herd of pigs go rushing down a cliff into a lake. They probably said, hey, there goes our barbecue. No more ribs, no more brisket, no more pulled pork sandwiches. They quickly began to look for someone to blame. Then they saw Jesus. Hey, they said, he'll do. After all, many teachers of the law already said that he was a little crazy himself. Being possessed by an impure spirit, they said. Beelzebub himself. Not even his brothers, his sisters, or his mama could get him to hush when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God, saying that any and all who did the will of his Father in heaven were his brothers, sisters, and mama. But that had happened on the other side of the Sea of Galilee far away for the Gerasenes. But now this Jesus had inexplicably showed up in this otherwise sleepy town. And wouldn't you know it, this rabbi teacher that many viewed as half crazy had to find himself with the craziest guy in town. His name was Legion, as he referred to himself. And by all accounts, he was a certified nut. His lunacy caused him to be banished from town and live in the tombs where they buried dead people. Dead people, y'all. That's where the townspeople wanted to keep him, by the way, so much so that they would chain him there. It was that form of that broken mentality that if you bury a problem or chain a problem, it will magically disappear. But... That's not life, is it? And it certainly wasn't legion. He kept breaking chains and coming back from those tombs, proving that problems aren't meant to be chained or buried. Problems have to be dealt with. The people of the Gerasenes weren't there yet, so the vicious cycle repeated itself over and over again. Chains made Legion chained, legion breaks chains. Oh no, 
here comes Legion again. The local town parents would scream, hide your eyes, kid, here comes Legion. The innocent children would answer, Daddy, why does that man walk around talking to himself, and why doesn't he wear any clothes? Because, my dear, they would answer with a certain tone of derision, he's crazy. <sighs> crazy. That pejorative term that we use sometimes to castigate others. Crazy. That word that can seemingly strip others of their humanity. Crazy. A condition that we believe is beneath all of us, but truly is within each of us. After all, <laughs> we're all a little crazy, aren't we? Crazy. That label for things, people, ideas that we don't use so we don't have to wrestle with the reality that the problem is our problem and perhaps is in some way of our own doing. But today in the Gerasenes, and I hope here in First Baptist Church, crazy is about to get turned on its head. Town legend has it that Jesus healed Legion with one sentence. Be gone, he said, from a distance, having seen Legion from afar piece off, but somehow knowing his affliction. The demons that splintered Legion's soul into 6,000 pieces cowered in Jesus' presence. Please let us go without destroying us. The evil had to go somewhere, but it certainly wouldn't be to another human being. So with ultimate wit and irony, Jesus allowed the demons to go into the pigs. Pigs? Nasty, stinking, reeking pigs viewed by all as unclean. What a fitting place for the agents of evil to go. But not even the pigs would be hospitable to them. Their temperaments soon represented the torture that Legion endured. And they selected a suicidal fate instead of playing host to the demons. Now, imagine this outlandish humor in this scene. One pig is effectively saying to the others, let's go drown ourselves. I mean... I'm willing to eat slop and live in my own manure, but playing host to a demon is even too low for me. So there went the pigs, screaming, stampeding, snorting, and screaming again. They ran down the lake shore and plummeted to their deaths. The demons' voices were now undone, and an eerie silence followed. Perhaps the pig herders in that moment were left in more than a little bit of bewilderment. After all, what do we tell our bosses, they said. They're not going to like this. Oh, here's an idea. Let's tell them that it was all Jesus' fault. So they left and reported their side of the story, of course, while omitting that Legion in the process was healed and was whole. And upon hearing the news, the local pig bosses were infuriated. This meant loss of income. How could they recover? And how could they save face before their stockholders? Here we go, they said. We need a scapegoat. Let's blame Jesus, they all said. He'll do just fine. So with that scapegoat in hand, they called an emergency meeting with the local business bureau of the Gerasenes and asked the press to be there as well. They wasted no time in their tirade. Their shouts and their shrieks sounded familiar to the animals they raised. That Jesus is a menace. He's killing the local barbecue economy. We won't be able to sell pork for years now. Jobs will be lost. Families will suffer. Children will go hungry and homeless. 
They even helped the local newspaper craft a headline that would go out in the evening edition. Hogs go wild. Jesus took our barbecue. Within the headlines were the predictable messages that power always imposes on the public. Be afraid, be angry, and of course, be suspicious of anyone that's different than you. With the release of the paper, the public was whipped up into a fury. So naturally, they organized a riot at the spot where the incident occurred. Armed to the teeth with vitriol and hate, they chanted in one accord, Go home, Jesus. Bring back the barbecue. The crowd's chant reached a feverish pitch when it encountered Jesus. Public enemy number one was now in their sights. There he is, they exclaimed. That's the man that stole our jobs and ruined our economy. That's the man that stole our barbecue. Undeterred, Jesus held his ground. He had experienced a time or two, an angry mob, and he knew that it was better to see that as an opportunity than as a threat. The crowd gathered around Jesus, ready to ride him out of town on a rail, but grew strangely quiet once they saw someone who looked familiar to them, but altogether different. He who was named Legion was there, but he wasn't the same Legion. The 6,000 voices that had filled his mind were evicted, and now there was only one voice, his own. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus, mind you, with clothes and in his right mind. The man nobody could tame was demonstrating his obedience to a new master. Decency had returned to him because dignity had been restored to him. Seeing the town crazy looked like a normal person scared those town folks to death. How did this happen, they asked. Legion answered, Jesus healed me and continued. In an instant, I saw who I was to be for my whole life. The townspeople took pause upon hearing this and seeing the crazy person who had not only became sane, but had become whole in the process at the hands of Jesus. For a moment, the townspeople forgot about the barbecue and reevaluated their life as they heard Legion's story. They thought, maybe life is more than the bottom line. Maybe life is more than simplistic storylines that keep the crazy people locked up and away from us. Maybe life is more than barbecue. Maybe it's about finding out what wholeness means. Maybe it's about community. Maybe it's about helping one another and inclusion. Maybe we're all a little crazy here too. Maybe we all need Jesus. Sensing that the tide of the crowd had shifted now in Jesus' favor, the pig bosses struck back. Don't be fooled by this teacher, he said. It's just a pipe dream. We know what you want and need. It's more barbecue. It's jobs. It's money. It's comfort. The town people paused and with hesitation but eventuality relented to the hands of power they knew. Jesus had to go. Life had to get back to normal. They returned to their attack on Jesus and told the one who brought them heaven to get the hell out of Dodge. Jesus politely said farewell, but in so doing, he left one who was to stay as a continual reminder in their conscience. It would be no one other than Legion, who asked if he could go with Jesus, but Jesus told him to stay instead. Stay so that each time the townspeople would see Legion out and about, strolling by and whistling a happy tune or smiling and speaking politely 
or holding down a job and providing for his family, they would think of Jesus and the possibility of maybe. Maybe there's truth to what Jesus said. Maybe Jesus did, in fact, know of a better way to live. Maybe Jesus is the Son of God. Maybe, just maybe, the only way to cure the world's craziness is to meet it with even crazier gestures of grace and peace and love. Maybe that's what will set the captive free and give hope to those who have none. Maybe. Maybe, church, today, we need to all confess that we are like legion. We all have a little bit of craziness that only Jesus can heal. There's a voice within us that's not of ourselves and is not of God. Call it mania, lunacy, or simply being a little cray-cray. There's something in us that vexes us and isolates us from others. Today, Jesus calls it into account, just like he did Legion, asking the question, what's your name? In other words, name that which perplexes you. Name that craziness within, and as we name it, we embrace the possibility that Jesus can push it out and replace it with none other by his own voice and peace. Maybe, church, we've fallen for the same lie as the town people by believing crazy folk only need to live on the outside. It's easier that way after all. We don't have to worry about the unknown. We don't have to worry ever about being uncomfortable. We can just focus on the things that we want to do, like come to church, hear a good sermon, have lunch and go home for an afternoon nap. After all, is that too much to ask? But all the while, we're buying into a lie. Because just because you don't see the problem doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. The only way to make it on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus would say, is by enduring a little hell. So maybe it's time that we address our disposition to different, to other, to new, even if, or especially if, other or different seem a little crazy. Maybe, church, we've lost our edge. Maybe we're not crazy enough to be effective in this age in which we live. We've somehow lost the practice of crazy grace and crazy love, which are so reckless and out of control that they seem to proclaim that there are more people going to heaven than many would like to think or admit. But isn't that good news? So shouldn't we be celebrating in a crazy way that heaven is going to be a party like any other? Because after all, it's not of our own planning or design, but of our Father in heaven. In that light, I'd like to think that the party in heaven's going to be a little funky, but in a crazy good way. So in light of a crazy good future, we can do crazy good stuff for others. Let's find a person that's beaten up by life and left for dead. Let's nurse them back to health and pay their full hospital and hotel bill. Let's have two cents remaining to our name and then put them in the offering plate on behalf of others. Let's pay a yard boy who's trying to earn money this summer, who's only given us a couple of hours of work, and yet pay him for the entire day. Let's tip a waiter or a waitress 100% today at lunch for the full price of our meal. After all, inflation, y'all, am I right? Let's walk two miles with the one who's only asked for us to walk with them one. Let's give someone a coat when they also ask for our tunic. Let's forgive others seven times, 70 times. For all of these things, all of these things, people will see and exclaim, have you gone crazy? Have you gone hog wild? 
And with a wink and a smile, we'll look at them and say, maybe. May the summer breeze blow long and hard in your face and at your back as we consider these things of crazy possibilities now and forevermore. May we pray. Our God in heaven, we all are a little crazy. Jesus can fix that. We also need to be a little crazy. Jesus can help that too. In the moments ahead, oh God, help us to experience and imagine the hog wild possibilities before us in this summer breeze and respond to you in kind. In Christ's name we all pray, amen. I invite